Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to continue to talk about area and perimeter. So our learning goal says I can construct rectangles with a given perimeter using square units and determine their areas. So friends, all that that means, we're in this lesson, we're actually going to be given the perimeter and then we're going to have to find um, the area of the rectangles. Okay, so the materials that you'll need for this lesson are your dry erase board. You'll need those square tiles. Again, if you don't have those, it's okay. You can get by this lesson without them, but if you have them, fine. And you'll need your problem set because we're actually gonna work through problem number one on your problem set. And good news, there's only two problems. So after this video, you'll be halfway done with your problem set. All right, so let's look at problem one. Okay, so the directions for this first part say, use your square unit tiles to build as many rectangles as you can with a perimeter of 12 units. So how is this problem different from the work we've been doing in the past few lessons? Hmm, kinda gotta think about that for a minute, right? So how is it different than what we've been doing? Well, maybe you're not sure, right? So before we knew the area of the rectangle and had to find the length and width. Now we need to use the perimeter to find the length and width. So we're kind of like going backwards or doing like the opposite of what we did before. So now we're working with the perimeter to find um, the length and width. So we know the total, but we don't know individual side lengths. So when we knew the area, we used pairs of factors to help us find the length and the width. What strategy might we use to help us when we know the perimeter? What do you think? Right, well, we could like build or draw the rectangles with different lengths and widths to see if the perimeter is 12 units. Uh, but you know, that might take too long. So let's see if we can figure out um, maybe a strategy we can use with another problem. So let's check out this one. So here is my rectangle. Okay, all of my side lengths are known in this one. Now the equation that I have says P, which stands for perimeter, equals two times three centimeters plus eight centimeters. So how does this equation represent the perimeter of this rectangle? So I want you to pause and I want you to think about how does that equation represent the perimeter of our rectangle? So pause and then think about that for a minute and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Okay, so friends, let's actually look at this by solving the uh, part in parentheses in our problem. So if we know that perimeter equals two times, well, we wanna solve this part right here, which happens to represent this, these two side lengths of our rectangle. So friends, what's three centimeters plus eight centimeters? Yeah, it's 11 centimeters. So when we multiply a number by two, what are we doing to that number? Like what's really happening to that number? Yeah, we double it, right? So we're really just doubling a number when you multiply it by two. So believe it or not, friends, the, um, this top equation actually does represent our rectangle, the perimeter of it. Because notice, if we were to add three plus eight, we get 11, right? But if we multiply that by two, we would be getting the other two sides because they're the same in a rectangle. So this equation shows the perimeter as double the sum of the width and the length. So let's check it by multiplying two times 11 centimeters. So friends, what's two times 11? Yeah, it's 22 centimeters. So if we add the side lengths, we also get 22 centimeters. So let's kind of check it. So friends, what's eight plus eight? That's 16, right? And then what's three plus three? Six. So what's 16 plus six? 
22. Okay, so that's just a different strategy you can use to solve it. But this is really using that doubling is really going to help us today with our problem set. All right, so can the perimeter of all rectangles be written as double the sum of the width and the length? I know that sounds kind of confusing, right? At least the first time I read it, it was a little confusing. But all that that's saying is if we take the sum of two sides, right, the two sides next to each other, like the three and the eight, is that, and then we double it, is that going to be the same for all rectangles? Absolutely it's going to be because all rectangles have opposite sides that are equal. So really, three and three, you're doubling it. Eight and eight, you're doubling it. So if you just add two of those sides together and double it, you're going to get your perimeter. Pretty cool. All right, so notice here, friends, I just wanna call your attention. So if we have three plus eight and we double it, we're adding this other side here in blue too. Okay, so just kind of a visual way to look at it. When you have the yellow, you double it, and then you also have the blue. The yellow and the blue are how you double those sides to get your perimeter. All right, so again, here's our problem for problem one. Okay, so let's see how knowing that strategy where you double the sum of the side lengths help with problem one. Okay, so it asks us to use unit squares to build as many rectangles as we can with a perimeter of 12 units. So we know that the perimeter, 12 units, is double the sum of the width and the length. What's the opposite of doubling a number? So if we don't double it, what's the opposite of doubling something? Yeah, it's like dividing it by two or, or halving a number, like halving, right? If you take it and you cut it in half, okay? So let's look at that. So 12 divided by two equals six. So if we're using this equation to help us find the perimeter of the rectangle, what does the six in this equation represent? What do you think, friends? Yeah, it's we divided the perimeter by two, so six is the sum of the width and the length. Okay, because we said we doubled the sum of the width and the length, and that's how we get back to 12. But when you cut it in half, that gives us um, the sum of the width and the length. Pretty cool. Okay, so again, we have 12 divided by 2 equals 6. So now that we know the sum of the width and the length, we can find pairs of numbers that add up to 6. So let's start at 1 and write the number sentences that have a sum of 6. So like, think about it, one plus five equals six, then we would go to two. So two plus what equals six? Yeah, four, two plus four equals six. Then we would go to the next number, three. Three plus what equals six? Three plus three equals six. Now then I would go to four and then it would be four plus two, but I don't have to write that because I already have two plus four. And then I would go to five and five plus one. I don't have to write that because we already have one plus five. And we definitely wouldn't go to six because that would be six plus zero. And you can't have a side length of zero. That wouldn't give us a rectangle. Okay, so I'm gonna move this up here. So those are the numbers that we came up with. What do these combinations represent? They're the possible widths and lengths for a rectangle with a perimeter of 12 units. Wait, wait, how do we know which is the width and which is the length? What can we do? Ah, so we're gonna sketch a rectangle one way and then trade the numbers that go with the width and length and sketch again. And notice what happens. So that's kind of tricky. All I want you to do, friends, is I want you to draw a rectangle that's one by five and then draw a rectangle that's five by one, okay? So pause the video. Draw two different rectangles, one by five, five by one, because we're taking that from our, um, our problems up in their box, right? And seeing how would, we, how would we determine which one is the length and the width. So pause the video, draw those two rectangles, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. 
Okay, so here's the two rectangles that I drew. One is one by five and one is five by one. Okay, so what do we notice about these two? Yeah, it's the same rectangle, right? It's just flipped. So it doesn't really matter, like for now, which one it is. But I would think about it when you draw it, just make sure that the smaller number is the smaller side length, okay? Whether you draw it side to side or up and down, it doesn't matter, okay? Okay, so now you're ready to complete problem one. But you know, you might be feeling like, I'm not super sure. So you know what, we're gonna go through number one together. You're gonna work in each part and then I'm gonna go over it with you, okay? So don't worry if you don't feel 100% confident in this, we're gonna keep talking about it. And I think when we have some more examples, it'll definitely make more sense. So for part A, it's draw the rectangles. So here's the rectangles that you're gonna draw. Okay, you're drawing a one by five, a two by four, and a three by three, okay? Because it wants you to draw the different possible combinations that have a perimeter of 12 units. Now remember, we figured out those combinations because we divided the perimeter in half and then found the factors, or sorry, the combinations of numbers that add up to make that number that was in half. So 12 divided by two is six. So we found all of the combinations that we could add together to make six for the side lengths. Okay, so pause the video, draw those three rectangles and label the side lengths, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Okay, so here's our rectangles, right? I'm gonna label them A, B, and C, because that'll help us with the other parts, okay? So if you haven't done that, do a quick pause real quick and label your one by five rectangle A, your two by four B, and your three by three C, okay? All right, friends, so those are your rectangles, right? We just took it right from those combinations that we came up with. We have a one plus five, a two plus four, and a three plus three. Now I want you guys to notice that you can check to make sure that these all have a perimeter of 12 by adding the side lengths. So if we look at rectangle A, if I added five plus five, that's 10, plus the two ones is 12, okay? Let's look at B, four plus four is eight, plus my two side lengths of two is four, so eight plus four is 12. And then if I add all of my side lengths on C, we would also come up with 12. So that's why these three rectangles represent a perimeter of 12, 12 units. All right, let's look at part B. It says explain your strategy for finding rectangles with a perimeter of 12 units. Now remember friends, that's where we use the strategy of dividing by two and then finding those combinations like we have in the box. So now you're gonna use written words to describe how you figured that out. And this part is super important because you're gonna use this strategy when you do problem two also. So this is really, this problem is where you're understanding what we're doing in this lesson, okay? So pause the video, explain how we figured out what those rectangles would be, the side links would be, when only knowing the perimeter, okay? So pause the video. Write your thoughts out and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. So what did we do to find the rectangles with a perimeter of 12 units? Well, this is what I came up with. First, I divided the perimeter by two to get six, right? So if we think back to it, we did 12 divided by two equals six. Then I found pairs that added to six to find the possible side lengths. Okay, so that's what I jotted down for part B. All right, and friends, hang on, let me go back to this. If you didn't get this, that's okay, jot it down now. Pause the video, jot it down, because you can refer back to this as your notes to help you solve problem two. Okay, all right, let's look at part C. Part C says find the areas of all the rectangles in part A above. Well, I can't look above, so I just made some little, some little ones right here so I could refer back to it. So you are finding the area of rectangle A, rectangle B, and rectangle C. Okay, remember friends, how do we find the area? Yeah, it's length, length times width. Okay, so pause the video, find the area of rectangle A, B, 
and C and label them as A, B, and C so we know. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so let's start with rectangle A. So we need to find the area. Here's rectangle A. We would do one unit times five units to come up with five square units. Now remember, if you don't have square in there, you need to be adding that part in because that's telling us that it's the area, right? It would be square units because it didn't tell us the measurement, whether centimeters or inches, so we would say square units. We would also say maybe if the measurement was centimeters, we would say square centimeters, okay? So remember, square is that giveaway that they're looking for the area. All right, let's look at rectangle B. We would have the side lengths are two by four, so we would have two units times four units equals eight square units. Okay, let's look at C. Three units times three units, those are the side lengths, would give us nine square units. Okay, so those are the areas of rectangle A, B, and C. All right, so part D, the perimeters of all of the rectangles are the same. What do you notice about their areas? So we know that they all have a perimeter of 12 units. I want you to pause and think about what do you notice about the areas that go along with those rectangles? So pause, think about that, write your answer down for part D, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here we go. So what do you notice? They're all different, right? They all have the same perimeter, but rectangle A's area is five square units, B is eight square units, and C is nine square units, okay? So in this lesson, we can see that our rectangles can have the same perimeter, but they don't always have to have the same area. Okay, so good job with that, friends. All right, guys, so now that we've done this one, you guys are ready to work on number two, problem two. Okay, so that's what you're working on independently. Um, it's very similar to problem one. So hopefully this will help set you guys up for success. Um, and I know you guys are going to rock it. Okay, so on this lesson, you guys rock. You guys did a great job constructing rectangles with a given perimeter using unit squares and determining their areas. So please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete uh, for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.